Hello and welcome to Gas and Watts. I'm Shane, and this is the Fisker Ocean Ultra. By now, you've probably heard many reviews on this vehicle. I'm not trying to add to another review, but I do want to talk a little bit about what I've experienced with the ocean, some of the issues, some of the joys that I've had owning a Fisker Ocean. Now, you've also probably heard that Fisker is having a lot of issues as a company. It's possibly going bankrupt. It kind of had a partnership fall through. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And as well as the 2.0 uh, software update for this vehicle. Let's get started. Now I actually want to start with the issues I've had with this vehicle. And I want to start right here with this key fob. This was the most frustrating thing to me about this fiscal ocean. And I say was because the software update 2.0 actually fixed a lot of the issues that I was experiencing with this key fob. Now before the update, when I pressed the unlock button on the key fob, it would not actually unlock the door. It would actually just wake up the Fisker. And I would have to wait an additional five seconds before actually pressing the button again and it actually unlocking. And it actually happens with locking the vehicle as well. When I get out of the vehicle and I press the lock button, it doesn't lock the vehicle. I mean, it doesn't need to wake up or anything, but it's a strange thing that happens. So I have to stand outside the vehicle pressing the lock button until it locks. It's a bit frustrating and a bit annoying. But with software 2.0 update, it actually, when I press the unlock button, it actually opens the vehicle. And when I press the lock button, it actually locks the vehicle. So with 2.0, Fisker has addressed one of the most frustrating and annoying things to me about this vehicle. So I'm actually pretty happy about that. Now let's hop inside and I'll show you some of the other issues that I would, I've been having with this vehicle. Now that we're in the vehicle, let's talk a little bit about the Advanced Driver Assist System or ADAS in the Fisker. It's one of the other issues that we kind of see pop up here and there. And it's not really annoying, but it does give us a warning on the display quite often where it tells us that the emergency sensor in the front isn't working so the emergency brakes won't deploy or anything like that. Or the lane assist isn't working because the, the sensors on, on for the lane assist aren't working because of the ADAS system. I usually don't use driver assist too often so this isn't really a big issue for me it's just something that pops up quite a bit that we see on on the screen so it's just something that happens now one of the other things that happens for us too is that when we actually turn on the vehicle this 17 inch screen here actually sometimes doesn't power on and it's a very simple fix all we have to do is do a quick reset of the vehicle and the vehicle will kind of power off and power back on and the screen will power up as well so it's not too big of an issue but it is an annoyance if you're trying to get somewhere uh, quickly uh, and the screen is not on and even though everything is working you kind of want to be able to kind of go through your options on the screen or change the music or something like that even if you can change the music right here on your on your wheel but with the screen on it's, it's much more helpful one of the other issues that we kind of see that's kind of strange in this vehicle, it doesn't happen too often, but it does happen, is that when we are sitting in the vehicle kind of enjoying some YouTube or something like that, uh, the power will circulate, it will go off and then come back on and the screen here will show that we're at a 0% state of charge and there's no battery life whatsoever. It's kind of strange. Sometimes I'll hit the, the brake again to kind of cycle the power and it'll, it'll clear up or I'll have to do a, a quick reset again and it kind of clears up and the car functions just as normal. It's just an odd issue that we see, but an issue nonetheless. With that, I also want to say that the 2.0 update that happened for the Fisker Ocean actually cleared up a lot of the issues that we were having with this Fisker Ocean, such as the key fob, lock and unlock issue, the ADAS system malfunction warnings uh, coming up, as well as the screen not turning on when we're 
powering up the vehicle or when it power cycles and it shows that we're at 0% uh, state of charge, those issues actually have kind of gone away. So I actually appreciate that Fisker has kind of addressed some of the major issues that have been going on with this vehicle. So I don't know what other updates may hold. Hopefully it fixes uh, any of the other bugs that come up. I haven't driven the 2.0 update for very long, but so far a lot of those issues have gone away. So I am enjoying the car a lot more. Now let's shift our focus on what I enjoy about this vehicle. And of course, we can't talk about the Fisker Ocean without actually talking about the design of this vehicle. Henrik Fisker did an incredible job with the Fisker Ocean. It's undeniably beautiful and it looks amazing. Draws a lot of attention when you're driving around and I've actually seen people kind of, while I'm going through the drive-through, try to take pictures of it or when I'm parked somewhere, they'll walk by and take pictures of, of the car. You will definitely recognize a Fisker Ocean when you see one. The Fisker Ocean definitely captures people's attention and interest when they see it in person. With that, I wanna talk about the most enjoyable thing about the Fisker and it's driving it. It's just fun. Everything feels planted when you're going around town. It's not too soft, which I enjoy. I like actually feeling the road beneath me. So driving this vehicle is just very, very enjoyable. It comes with three modes, of course. It comes with Earth, Fun, and Hyper. Now, Earth is the most comfortable mode inside the Fisker. It gradually gives you power when you hit the acceleration and it's not too jerky when you're taking off. So the ride is very comfortable and very easy. Now, if you want a little bit more responsiveness, you go into fun mode where the pedal now will give you power more instantaneously than it did in fun mode, as well as it turns the front wheel drive Fisker into a four wheel drive Fisker with a distribution of 45, 55 in the rear. And then if you want a little bit more excitement, you hit Hyper. And Hyper will give you more instantaneous access to the power inside of the Fisker Ocean. So once you press the pedal, it, the response is very, very quick. So Hyper is the most intense mode for the Fisker Ocean. Now that I've talked about the three modes, I wanna show you what launching the Fisker looks like in Earth, Fun, and hyper mode looks like. All right, so we're about to come up to a stop sign. I'll come to a complete stop and I'll kind of show you the launch of the Fisker Ocean in Earth mode. All right, come to a complete stop here. All right, now pedal to the metal. Woo! All right, as you can see, it actually gives you quite a bit of power, but it does ramp up a little bit. It doesn't give you that power instantly, but quite a bit of torque right right off. So I'm going to ch change it to fun mode, and I'll show you what fun mode looks like on launch. All right, let's come to a complete stop now on fun mode, and we'll show you the launch of fun mode. Three, two, one, pedal to the metal. Oh yeah, oh. Woo! I don't know if you heard there, we kind of peeled out a little bit, but yeah, the power range is almost very, very responsive, almost instant. So you get that push right away, all four wheels just take off. So you get quite a bit more power with fun mode. Now I'm gonna change it to hyper and we'll test out launch one more time. All right, we're at a stop sign. I'm gonna complete stop and we're gonna test out hyper mode launch. So three, two, one, pedal to metal. Whoa, whoa, whoo. So very similar to almost, very similar to fun mode, but a little bit more instant in the power and man, that torque, 
it's it's a lot of fun so now on a daily basis i usually just drive in earth or fun mode just depending on the weather usually if the weather is bad i'll put it in fun mode because i want the four wheel drive of the vehicle but most of the time earth mode will, will do for me I, I like the comfort in it uh, the response is not too slow for me now let's talk a little bit about the differences between the extreme trim and the ultra trim that we have here now the biggest difference between the extreme and the ultra is the solar sky you don't get the solar panels on the roof but i think i enjoy the fisker more without the solar sky and having this great view up into the sky with, with this big sun sunroof ab above us so it's pretty great probably the other big difference is that the passenger and the driver's seat do not get the extra storage that you see in the extreme version or the launch version of this vehicle as well as you don't get the taco tray that you do in the extreme as well so there's just a big space in the center console now you don't get the wireless charging in the middle console as well you do have the slots for phones for the passenger and the driver but they don't do wireless charging and as well as in the back seat you don't see the climate controls for the passenger in the middle console that you can pull the middle armrest that you pull down from the uh, back seat one of the other things I kind of enjoy about the Fisker is that they have zippers in the child safety locks and I'll show you here in a second but the child safety locks have zippers that open and close which I've never seen in a vehicle and it just kind of keeps the fabric clean and it allows the fabric to kind of go back to its normal state once you zip it back up so you don't see the ugly stretched fabric like you do in some other cars i'm surprised how much i actually like that feature but i, I do like that feature of course there are some party tricks inside of the fisker and one of them being the california mode which opens all the windows in the fisker and you can access that in this top panel here with by just pressing this button and your key fob by pressing the key fob button as well it's also great for in the summer if you're needing to kind of ventilate the car and kind of cool down the car a bit you can press that california mode and your car will get all the heat in your car will kind of ventilate out and of course the other party trick for the fisker is this screen in the middle of the vehicle it can turn horizontally by pressing the button which allows you to watch some media while you're waiting for your vehicle to be charged. You can access YouTube, Apple TV, Disney, Pluto, Hulu, or Prime. It's kind of a great way to pass the time while you're waiting for your car to get charged. The kids love it. Actually, my kids want to sit in the car for every trip that we go on now, just because they can watch some YouTube in the car. Now with that, I want to circle back did I make a mistake buying this vehicle? I don't think so. I enjoy the Fisker and it looks like they're doing some updates to address some of the issues that have been happening. So with that, I'm happy with the car. Issues are being addressed. So I don't think it's a mistake. Now you've also probably heard that Fisker as a company isn't doing all that well with bankruptcy talks, and as well as partnership deals falling through but the vehicle itself is still fairly good and they are still dedicated to trying to update software to fix any of the issues that customers are having now will they still update regularly if they go under who knows but with 2.0 it's pretty good the car is actually pretty good with 2.0 everything else is is, is great so i i don't know now you also probably know as well that there's kind of a big sale with all the inventory from 2023 if you're if you're able to find a fiscal ocean in inventory the extreme or the ultra or the sport they're like twenty six thousand dollars off so you can find like a stream for thirty seven thousand i think the ultra is about thirty four thousand and then if you can find a sport in inventory you it's going for like 24,000 those are great deals now should you buy it 
that's up to you. To me, I think the car is great, but to each their own. Whatever you decide is whatever you know is best for you. There's a lot of things to consider when you're buying a car. So whatever situation you're in, you can make that decision yourself. So I won't tell you it either way. Now you can go in the comment and tell me how much of a mistake I did for buying this car, if you would like. Uh, even though I don't think so. You can tell me why or why not you think that I made a mistake. With that, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing. We're trying to get more content out as soon as possible. With that, I actually want to call out Abe, which is my partner in this channel. He's creating a video right now. I just want to push him to kind of get it finished and release to you guys. So what I'm going to do is release a little bit of a teaser, an epic one shot that we filmed on the car that he is going to be talking about. So stick around after this video for that teaser. Thank you again for watching. Have a great one. I'll see you next time.